Hello there, good evening and a warm welcome. Now, when we speak of loans, it's a nightmare, it's a headache that a lot of people tend to have. But it's also important to be aware of recovery of loans, which is derived by the term parate. Today, we're going to speak about parate execution on law and order, and we're joined by a fabulous expert, uh, attorney at law, Seneca de Serum, who is going to educate us on this very interesting subject of uh, parate execution. Good evening, uh, Seneca. Great evening. to have you with us again. Good evening. So, parate, it's not uh, parata or <laughs> a, any other interesting word that you come across. Can we give a little insight as to what the meaning is about and how does it work? Yeah, Sharon, now, this is basically a concept that was there some time back where when you take a facility, you mortgage your property and the banks have a right to execute the mortgage and sell it if you default. Yeah. Now, back uh, earlier in the day, prior to these acts, for the bank to do that, they have to go to court. And they had to file a case, they had to win the case, and only sell the property. And this takes? This takes a little bit of time. Okay. But then came a time, a golden era for banks, where in Sri Lanka they brought about acts, mm. where the bank board of directors can pass a resolution saying you're in default of a facility, and they can execute a sale by your auction. Mm -hmm. Now that is, simply put it, that is what parate means, where the bank on its own, Can without recover. going to court, mm -hmm. execute a board resolution and tell auctioneer to sell the property of yours on the basis that it's mortgaged to the bank and you're in default. So simply put it. What's the pros and cons of this? Well, there is two sides to the coin. Mm -hmm. One is a default uh, uh, will have no choice when it comes to these uh, these are very draconian law. Mm. And even in the Supreme Court, there are cases which have defi we have said that it's a draconian law. So if you are a defaulter and you're subject to this law, then you have basically very few options. So mm. moment the bank starts the process, it is advisable that you go and see somebody who knows about this area to see what you can do. Mm. Otherwise, it's like a freight train coming at you. You know, you can't stop it. Mm. On the other side of the coin is, by the time this process has started in the bank, the loan has been in default. So if you allow these defaulters to continue to be in default, the banking system will have a strain. Mm. So it is a good system, providing that it's uh, done in a, I should say, humane manner, mm. and where it's exec executed in a way where both parties' rights are safeguarded. Mm -hmm. So bank has to collect money, so it's a process for the bank to collect money also, if you have taken money, you have to return money. So can any properties mortgage be sold? Not every property can be sold. Mm. So for example, there are some developments that, that took place. The original law, yes, if you have mortgaged, it can be sold. Then the, they brought in an amendment to the act, which says, OK, if your loan is 5 million, the capital amount is below 5 million, then you can't go by your product. So it saved the small time. Mm. Then the Supreme Court, in a very celebrated uh, judgment, uh, said if it's a third party mortgage, for example, where I have mortgaged my property for a loan of yours, mm. then the Supreme Court said no. That sort of mortgage also uh, can't be executed by your parat because it's my property and right. you have benefited the loan. Mm. So there are exceptions to that. And also, we saw the central bank stepping in uh, this year due to COVID. And they came in and said, okay, look here till uh, if the loan is non-performing, give them a chance. Uh, try to enter into an agreement with them. And the central bank gave a formula how to restructure the loan. And if that is taking place, you cannot execute parity on those properties. Seneca, take me through a, a nice, interesting case study. Uh, we would like to educate our people that these are the areas that you need to be aware you need to be careful when it comes to parate execution. Yes, now, first of all, a lot of clients who come to us trying to stop auction mm -hmm. of a parate, they come at the last minute. So you know when you have taken a loan that you are going to get into default. So that is the point of time maybe you will need to see your accountant, your lawyer, and come up with a plan. Because there is a point of time of no return because the bank will stop talking to you. Now, I know one customer, he was uh, maintained at a particular bank in their special lounge. 
Now, they don't, there is nobody to even open the door for him oh when no. he goes there. They don't pick up his phone even. This so is post-COVID? This is uh, not COVID period, okay, but okay. he has gone into default. Oh, okay, okay. So generally banks are good to you when you're paying, but mm. when you're in arrears for a long period of time, then you fall into their bad books. You can't blame the bank mm. and you're not considered at all. So when you are coming into that stage, you know. Mm. Now, for example, the travel industry of Sri Lanka knows maybe for the next one year we'll be like this. Correct. So it's good to see what you're going to do with your facilities and make sure uh, you're geared to a process where th when the bank starts this process, you're in a position to at least, as a final result, if you can't resolve it with the bank, go to a court and stop the auction. Mm. Because once the auction is held, the ownership of the property is uh, transferred, you know, after the auction. And you have very little limitations in the law to get it back unless you pay up. Senaka, now a lot of them will probably wonder post uh, pandemic, there is this huge issue of no money fluctuating in the market, the economy is down, everyone's crashing, and how do I pay up these loans? And it's probably a nightmare for some people who are watching us right now thinking um, it's a serious case of issues. What has, uh, what kind of system can we tell them given this period that it's not uh, your safe zone? You need to be careful. Yeah, now first thing is, that's the thing. Now, some people were actually sleeping, unfortunately. So the central bank, as I told you, put up two directions. Uh, it's called four of 2020 and five of 2020, which gave relief for these sort of people. And they gave cutoff dates, 31st March. They extended it by another two weeks and said, if you have a facility like this, go to the bank and apply for a thing called a moratorium. Mm. Now, some people have not done this. And so if you don't exercise your rights at the correct time, you don't get the benefits. So main thing is to be vigilant of what is happening in the industry. The second thing is go to the bank and try to renegotiate. Because from the bank's point of view also, they are aware of this. Mm -hmm. And they are not in very keen to execute a property and go on a long voyage of uh, litigation with you uh, to recover money. Mm -hmm. So if you can do that, that's the best way forward. But don't wait till the last minute. That right. is what is happening now. Everybody, you know, like the ostrich with the head in the sand, yeah. they are waiting like that. Right. So it's only a matter of time where disaster is going to strike. So it's better to get your head out of the sand, open your eyes a little bit, and, and be aware. When talk with these banks. If you are unsatisfied with the response, then you may need to seek legal advice and see what action you can take ahead. There are numerous, now if you take the Companies Act, there are numerous ways where you can call creditors for a meeting and have a compromise with them. So it's not just a set method. This, this will include banks as well. Mm. So there are a few cases like that file. Smart uh, guys, they have gone, got proper legal advice, they have gone to the commercial high court, and they have got a system in place to see how they can tackle these payments. So the problem what is happening here is now is some people are just flabbergasted, I should say, with what has happened to them. Correct. And they are... It's like the unexpected yes. storm. So so they don't think now. They are basically... Brain, they have gone blank, I mm. should say. Mm. I should, you should get out of that. If, if you can't think, you should get some employee that is there in the company and start the process, you know. Otherwise, you are going to be hit with a bigger disaster. Mm. Senaka, so, now... I'm going to deviate from our main title today a bit and speak about these loans where a lot of them were off the view that, okay, this percentage is working from this point and this is how if you are investing in a house, this is where your interest comes in from here and that's how it works. Um, the proposed projects, yes, that's fine. But the people who had taken loans are probably stuck the banks are not being so flexible in bringing down their rates and stuff. How do you see this? Is this the right thing that they're doing? Yes. Now, that issue is there because loans taken earlier mm -hmm. are at the interest rates that you have taken previously. Absolutely. But yeah. if you take the interest rate today, it has dropped, dropped. drastically. So banks It seems don't a bit unfair on yes. the people. Now, you must understand why banks do this also. Because mm -hmm. if you had a fixed deposit some t three years ago mm -hmm. and you got a interest rate, you would have got a very high interest rate. And if it's for three years, the bank has to pay All that three rate. Years. So the bank takes that money and their loan money and gives it to you. 
So, so that is why they have an interest rate for you. Hmm. So if they reduce you, they have to reduce their lending, the borrowing persons as well. So hmm. the fixed deposit is fixed. So that's the same so, process. So that's the issue. So that is why loans taken at that time are not. But you can go in, speak to them, and ask for a reschedule one, and okay. say, okay, these are they. Give us a little further time. Mm. and reschedule the original facility. Right. So sometimes it works, but sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes it seems very unfair as yeah. well. What happens if the property is auctioned and it's gone beyond? I'm sure you would have handled yes. uh, cases related to this. Yeah, that's very, it's a very unfortunate situation because I personally feel 75% of the time you can prevent an auction. Mm. You can talk to them or you can go to court or do something. Why do people wait for the last minute? Uh, sometimes they are ill-advised, I should say, mm. or mm. sometimes they feel, uh, no, the bank will never do this. Mm. Yeah, or some, sometimes I think uh, they also feel... Can push it. We can push it. And, of course, the last one I say, why spend two lawyers <laughs> when we can <laughs> sort it out? <laughs> <laughs> so okay. that's the option. Uh, so coming back to your question, yeah. uh, once the auction takes place, as I told you, the ownership will transfer, yeah. somebody will purchase it, or the bank will purchase it. And if you are still living there, then there is a very summary procedure that is there in the law to get you out. Mm -hmm. So they will then, f then only file the case and say, okay, now this is our property, please back it. Yeah. And courts are very friendly towards that because it has come the whole hog. It's an interesting area of subject uh, that we can go on beyond, but uh, we'll try to stick to the main uh, topic today being parate execution. How does the purchaser of such a property get uh, the possession after the auction? Yes, as I told you, the purchaser, if you, the original owner doesn't leave, mm. they have to go to court mm. and get it out. Mm. So is that there is a chance where we can work our way back? And, uh, yes, but if that is if the bank has purchased it. Okay. Of course, if somebody else has purchased it, he's very keen no to uh, occupy. No, mm. so mm. he he's not keen to give it back to you. Mm. So the chances are very limited. Of course, if the bank has purchased it, they'll be very happy to take money and give it back to you. How do we control this parate execution process? You see, it's it has two sides to the coin. If you go to control it you will have a situation where the financial sector, the banks will be affected. Mm. Because if you have a lot of NPLs, uh, non-performing loans, it's going to affect the bank. And the last thing we want to happen in this country is for a bank to crash. Mm. Of course, controlling it in the sense, that, as I told you, there are limitations now. Below five million is spared. Okay. If it's a third party property, it's spared. Then also, if a company is subject to a winding up, as you say, if you can't pr proceed, then we, people will go to court and wind up the company. Then also it's spared. So there are little, little safeguards. There are little, little safeguards, but majority, I should say, it's a difficult thing to stop. And do all courts have jurisdiction to stop an auction? Yes, that's a very good question you asked me, uh, because now you see, when the banks execute parate, the properties may be scattered anywhere in Sri Lanka. Mm and you go to a lawyer near your home. So for example, if you're in Jaffna, you will go to a lawyer in Jaffna mm. and you will say, get some other, st try to stop this. So sometimes the people there or anywhere, I mean, I just took an example at Jaffna or even in Hampantota or wherever, wherever will go to the court in their hometown and stop this auction. Mm. That is not permitted by the law. So you have to seek uh, order from the courts of Colombo because you are challenging a resolution mm -hmm. as I told you earlier it's a board resolution that was done in Colombo okay. so because the resolution is done in Colombo you have to file the case in Colombo so it's very unfortunate sometimes we feel we have gone we have defended those cases we have won those cases because they file those cases get the initial order and then we are manage we can dissolve that order mm -hmm. and they go ahead so then the people there feel what, what's the issue, what's the point in the court system? Mm, mm. So they, they think like that. So it's all the problem of being ill-advised. So you have to be careful of where you go and what you do. So it's, as I told you earlier, good advice from the beginning will mm. reap the benefits. If you get bad advice or if you take no advice, it's a recipe for disaster for you. What has been your most 
challenging case uh, if, if, if we can share it with our audience? I should say challenging in the sense you've, uh, now there, there are situations where this is done uh, to default a bank. Mm -hmm. That means it's deliberately done, fraudsters. Okay. So they will, uh, may, we'll, say, we'll, say, we'll take example, we'll take it, your home that you're living in. Okay. They will forge a deed. Okay. They will go to the bank and they will mortgage it mm -hmm. because they have forged the deed and got it in another person's name. Mm -hmm. They take the money from the bank and they don't care. Then they default the loan. Then the bank goes against the property, the property. for parati. Yeah. And you are just a bystander. Now this is happening in Sri Lanka. Whoa. This is happening in Sri Lanka. And it's a very dangerous trend given the fact that these forgeries are taking place. Now I understand why the banks want us to sign about 30 <laughs> documents. Correct. Because the bank also sometimes has been misled. Because if you if they look at the deed, they look at 30 years title, they have done it very well. Sometimes when you do land cases, the forged deed is better than the original deed. Mm -hmm. they, they go to the extent, they have even the stamps at that time. Mm. So they, these forgers who do this, if they want to make a deed in 1970s, they have the necessary stamps, Whoa. the seals, everything. Whereas sometimes your original deed, there might be issues. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. It could be So different. their deed is more perfect than your deed. Mm. So the bank also doesn't know. Mm. So at the end of the day, you're in a total mess. The bank is hoodwinked. They go scot-free because they have taken the money. So there are so many fraudsters. With there are fraudsters mm. and there are cases like that mm. where you have third parties, innocent people uh, going to court to stop auction and sometimes they are not very successful mm. because of the draconian parate law. Right. Wow. Um, what kind of advice can you give to our viewers? Now, I know that this is a different aspect of area and it's really, really unfair if you are caught in the middle of a situation like that. Yeah, first thing is you must balance your cash flows. You must not go to take a facility which you can't pay. So if you can balance your cash flows, this whole issue will not arise. Parati will be a non-existing thing for you. The next thing is if you are going back on your cash flows and you know that it's time you take some legal steps on it. First talk to the bank, failing with, meet somebody who knows this area and come up with a solution with him where you have a breathing space. For example, if you take COVID, we are not going to have this forever. You only need a breathing space and make sure the bank does not execute parate during the breathing space. You can definitely work out something like mm -hmm. that. You get good, smart guys who will advise you on that. And you can't just come to uh, the day before the auction and say, look, yeah, I want to stop this auction. Even the courts will throw you out. They're not going to. But if you have made a genuine effort for a long period of time, and the courts also see, okay, this man has really made a genuine effort, they are not hesitant to give you that order. Mm. But if the courts also find, okay, you have been in default, even prior to COVID, you have been in default, and now coming here last minute, the courts are also mindful of protecting the banking industry. Mm. So it's all about good advice, timely advice, and knowing what you're doing. Can you uh, touch a little bit on the international aspect of uh, Parate law? Um, how do you see this working in Sri Lankan context as well as uh, internationally? Is there like a big difference? No, basic principles are the same. Mm -hmm. but. Uh, the Sri Lankan context is all local laws. It's okay. all statute law. There is, as you, as you say, uh, now if you take the law of trust, sometimes you, uh, you will look up to the English law. Correct. But in Sri Lanka, nothing of the sort. It is purely our laws that have been System. enacted by our parliament and it has been interpreted by courts. So we don't need to look anywhere else when it comes to law. It's quite clear now and our courts are interpreting it. So the basic principle of executing a Parate procedure is the same anywhere in the world. Right. Anywhere in the world. Senaka, now a lot of people will not go to the extent of thinking about a Parate law. Uh, it'll be after a particular incident that took place, they'll be like, okay, is this what it is? How can we educate them? This is the process that you need to follow. Like you said, you need the legal experts, you need to be aware. But is it the point from where we take the loan? or at what stage do we decide on this? Very good question. Now, that's a point that a lot of people don't understand. I think the triggering point is when the bank sends you a letter of demand. Mm. 
Mm. Moment the bank sends you a letter of demand, that means you are no longer in the good books of the bank, mm. and you have to sort yourself off. Is that Be a colorful letter? Uh, it's basically black and white generally, okay. with a nice uh, letterhead on of the bank. Mm -hmm. Or sometimes they get another lawyer to send it, so then it's not colorful at all. Okay. It's black and white. But uh, the contents are definitely not very mm. conducive to you if you are a recipient of it. But that, I should say, is the starting point. Right. Because from there, if you don't take proper action, you are not going to be successful even in a court case. Mm. But before that, they will inform you. Right. So you will, they'll send the first letter, you're in default, second letter, third letter. So by the time it comes to the letter of demand stage, this file has gone from the manager's desk to the legal department. Mm. So it's not going to get back to the manager's desk unless you pay up. So if you have the money, you won't be in that situation. So with the first, second letter, letters, talk to them. Not doing, if you are not successful, as I told you, seek advice. So just to explain you the process, you will get the re letters of reminding, you will get a letter of demand, then they will send you a statutory notice saying that we are going to auction your property. Mm -hmm. Then they will send you the resolutions, board resolutions saying, okay. Is this on a weekly basis or? They do it quite fast. Okay. So within a few months, they will get it onto mm -hmm. auction level. Mm -hmm. So then they will send you the board resolution, which has been published in the Gazette and all that. And then they will nominate auction date and they will guess at that also. But I should say, after the letter of demand, they are very, very fast. Because you must understand these banks work with a very good legal team. Mm -hmm. They are very well advanced. And they have done this over and over again, whereas you are doing it for the first time. Correct. So making an, a request or an appeal of extension is a bad idea? It's a good idea, providing that you can uh, negotiate with them and do it. Mm -hmm. Now, for example, when it came to COVID, there was a mandatory requirement of the banks to do it Correct. because of the central bank intervention. Mm -hmm. So then they had to do it. That's why you don't find auctions during this period of time. But uh, come end of September, I'm sure there'll be auctions again and uh, people will face this problem. What's the scary side of things? That, that will probably be my last question because once a person gets into debt, Senaka, that's a lot of uh, weight on their life. This is where their mindset changes, their lifestyle changes, a lot of uh, discomfort among the families, etc. All of that comes into play when it's debt. At what point is there the scary red flag? Is it like, I, like we discussed previously on uh, the point where you get the first letter of demand or should they be wise? know whether to go for a loan or not? Well, you can't sometimes in institutions or some uh, enterprises, you can't do without a loan. It's, you, you, you can't need raise, it you need invest. it, you need it. For example, uh, to buy equipment, all that, you need it. But coming back to your question, I mean, you know when your finances are not paying up the monthly payments, that is the time when you get frightened about. Mm. But uh, criminal liability is very scarce. Mm the banks will not institute criminal liability. They will go for civil action. So they will, it will take time. Mm. If you file a case, as you know, our system is so good that it will take time. The speedier one is this parate. Mm. So if parate is not handled well, you will have the fear of losing your property or living in. Mm. Whereas in a civil suit, and other than in a mortgage case where you have mortgage, mm. they can't come and get your property where you're living. Mm. But in the parate process, they can. So you'll have a situation where you lose your house. Mm. So that's quite frightening, actually. So it's good to know where to draw the line when it comes to taking of loans. And thereafter, if you are defaulting, what to do? Wow, Seneca, thank you very much. Uh, some very interesting insights and also very educative. I think if you are pursuing, want to be a lawyer, this is an interesting side of <laughs> events. Plus, it's also good that you can learn on these areas so that you don't fall into trouble uh, from anywhere. Seneca Disairam, thank you very thank much. You. A real thank pleasure you. having you with us on the show. Uh, attorney at law, uh, Seneca Disairam with us uh, to speak on um, Parate execution law and also its insights. Now, while we bring you all these interesting subjects and areas, you can also check us out uh, on our 
channeli.lk website. We've uploaded these videos. And until we see you next time on a very interesting subject, we certainly hope you'll have a great evening. I'm Sharon wishing you good night. <laughs>